Hello there. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of In the Community with the AARP Foundation Experience Corps. I'm your host. My name is O.S. Owen. And today we have a special guest in our studio. We have Chris Winston, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for the Special Olympics Illinois. Hey, Chris, thanks so much for coming by today. Thanks for having me, OS. I really appreciate it. Well, you know, we've been talking all afternoon, and I'm just so excited about the Special Olympics Illinois. Mm -hmm. And for our, our viewing audience, what is the Special Olympics of Illinois? Special Olympics Illinois is uh, one of 220 chapters around the world in 172 countries. So every state in the United States is a chapter, California always being different, of course. Mm -hmm. They've got Northern and Southern Cal, but every other state has their own geography, it's the same geography. Every province in Canada is a chapter, then outside of Canada and the US, it's every country. So Special Olympics Mexico, Japan, so that's why there's more chapters than countries. But there's 5.5 million athletes, globally in 172 countries um, that compete in over 11,000 events a year, globally. A year? In Illinois, there's over 23,000 athletes that compete in 200 competitions just in our state alone on a yearly basis. Now, we've just talked earlier, so now you guys are celebrating, what, 51 years? 51 years. So sure. how did it get started, where did it get started, and who got this started? Special Olympics, uh, I'll give you the quick, abridged, long version. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, it's kind of three tracks. There was a professor at Southern Illinois University. It's got a lot of roots in Chicago and Illinois. Uh, professor at Southern Illinois University called Dr. Uh, Bill Freeberg. He, got his, uh, he was the first ever man to get his doctorate in uh, recreation from Indiana University in 1949, went back to Carbondale, got money from the president of Southern Illinois University, started a camp called Camp Little Grassy, which is still there today. Was he an athlete? Uh, he was not. Hmm, okay. He was not. Um, uh, and then they started Camp Little Grassy, which was a recreation camp. This is in the 50s. was a recreation camp for the intellectually disabled. That's happening. On a separate track, we know Eunice Kennedy Shriver, uh, John uh, JFK, and yeah. RFK's sister, who the, all the brothers said if she was a man, she probably would have been president. Um, she started, she, they actually said that. She started um, uh, Camp Shriver in their backyard in Maryland at the same time. Doing that, she learned about Dr. Freeberg, visited Dr. Freeberg in Southern Illinois, learned what he's doing, and those two made a connection. He actually ended up being on the um, Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation, father, Papa Kennedy, yeah. um, which funded all that activity. A third track was a woman by the name of Ann McGlone, who worked at uh, West Pullman Park, Chicago Park District. Mm -hmm. um, she was in her early 20s, uh, started doing and learning about the intellectually disabled, started doing um, activities for the intellectually disabled at the camp, at the park, in 1964, 1965, met and learned more from Dr. Freeberg, and then she came back and said, I got a great idea for a track and field event for the intellectually disabled, at the time mentally retarded in the 60s, um, at Soldier Field. That's my idea. How do I get it started? She met Dr. Freeberg. He said, great idea. you got to get it funded. Eunice Kennedy Shriver. That's how that all three came together. That was the first one. They came up with the idea. Eunice worked with uh, uh, Ann McGlone um, and said, okay, well, I'll fund you. I'll, I'll give you the money out of the foundation to run this first competition, but I got to work on it. She blew it up from athletes in Chicago. So we're going to do a thousand athletes from U.S. and Canada. The rub is Anne McGlone is now Chief Justice Ann Burke of the Illinois State Supreme Court. Fancy that, will you? Yeah. <laughs> so 50 years ago, this idea was was given birth, and it ended and it started in Chicago. Soldier Field. So now, was there any um, any uh, I guess friction about this? I mean, you used the term mental retardation. And then now it's... Intellectually disabled. Okay, was there any friction about doing this? You know what? I don't know if it was friction. It was the fact that um, we call it the intellectually disabled and mentally retarded at the time, mental retardation. They were living in the shadows. They were living in yes. homes, living in institutions, living in their own home. This was something that brought them out um, into the public, really to show... The social mission of Special Olympics, which is showing what, not what people's disabilities are, but what their abilities are. Perfect and that started point. back in 1968. And, and that was way ahead of its time. Very much so. You know? And that was the vision of all three of those, too. 
Okay, okay. So now, you're in this super fantastic organization. What's the connection for you now? I mean, are you a former athlete? I was a former athlete. I you know, played football in high school. Um, I skied. I was a nationally ranked ski racer. Uh, but my, uh, my connection is my brother. My brother, David, um, who was my older brother, was an athlete. Um, he was a bowler. He was severely and physically and mentally um, intellectually disabled. Um, and he was a bowler. And, you know, they put the ball in the rack and he could just push it down the lane. Uh, but he passed away in 99, and I was in the media business, um, in the radio business, and I would, um, I would uh, volunteer my time. Um, so you started as a volunteer? I started as a volunteer in his memory, and then one day I said, i got to put my money where my mouth is, and I went to work for Special Olympics Illinois, and I, I love it. So what's the mission? The mission is we're a year-round sports organization. Um, we are a sports organization for the intellectually disabled. We use sport to give uh, the athletes opportunity to do much, much more. So the, the mission is about sport. Um, we have an opportunity, there's times where um, while we can't get in the advocacy business mm -hmm. or we can't get in the employment business, um, we're not, a, we're not a, a employment agency, because um, that comes up a lot. Can you help, you know, help our athletes get jobs? Like we can't do that, but we okay. can, we have athlete leader programs separate of sports. So sports has really helped our athletes gain the confidence to go to school, to get jobs, get in the workforce. We have an athlete leadership program, which is not, has any, nothing to do with sports. It teaches them how to be leaders, how to be public speakers, um, and get out there. So our mission is sports, but there's all this stuff around it. Well, you know, sports is the fundamental foundation of um, discipline, good conduct, teamwork. I mean, for, for anyone and everyone. And I can see how that would really fit in. So, okay, so what are the parameters? How, how, am I two, three, four, five? How do I come in? And what's the way to get in? The way to get in is um, traditional Special Olympics sports, you got to be eight years old and older. Eight years old. Um, and I'm glad you asked me that, OS, because... As I said, we have 200 competitions in our state. We get the question, when are the Special Olympics? I think a lot of people who are watching or live in a community think, you know, our last, our last World Games were in Abu Dhabi in March. Are like, I live on the corner of here and there. There's no way I'm getting my son or daughter or sister brother is going to get from here to Abu Dhabi or Sweden or Berlin in, yeah. in 2020. That's like out of the realm of consciousness. With 200 competitions in our state in one year, mm -hmm. there's a competition within five miles of your house um, within a couple months, probably. So every, every city in Chicago has an opportunity to participate. Absolutely. Okay. So you go to um, S-O-I-L-L, S-O, Special Olympics, I-L-L, Illinois, dot org, and we're split up to 11 regions. You put in your zip code, you'll find the region. Um, that you live in, and then they'll, from there, they'll find you your agency um, that's local that you can that you can call and talk to, and then get involved. Get involved. If you're just uh, tuning in in our viewing audience, we're here with special guest Chris Winston, who is the chief marketing officer of the Special Olympics, and we are bringing to you by the AERP Foundation Experience Corps. We can be reached at 312-660-8655, and we are constantly looking for volunteers, folks over 50, to be tutors and mentors for kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders in the Chicago public schools. Now, in, in, in that regard, you know, volunteers, everybody uses volunteers. You guys use volunteers. Mm -hmm. So in what way do you use volunteers, and especially you can use volunteers, you know, over 50? Share it for our viewing audience, for, for those who are interested in being volunteers, how to get involved, and talk a little bit about those folks that are 50 years over who can be volunteers. Um, being 50, over 50 myself. No, you wear it well. <laughs> and an AARP member, by the way. Um, <laughs> the smartest group on the planet, I think. <laughs> um, by all means. Uh, fully able, 50 is the new... They used to, I, mean, I think 10 years ago they said 50 is the new 40. I think 50 is the new 30 now. I think the older people get, the younger they are. And half, you know, our generation, I'm 53, is going to live to be 100. You know, 50 well, yeah. and 60 is just a way station on the, to the halfway through your life. Well, the first 50 years were given to us. 
you know, now the next 50 years, we know how to eat, we know how to sleep, we know how to exercise, we know how to say no, we know what stress is. So now we've got this pool of wisdom and to understand the purpose of, of serving each other. I mean, volunteerism is food for the mind, for the body, and for the soul. And we encourage our folks who are out there who want to be involved to find something where your passion is and, and get involved. So how are volunteers used and needed in the Special Olympics? A lot of ways. First of all, if much like if uh, you have an athlete or uh, a son or a daughter, or you go to uh, a, whoever that might be that's intellectually disabled that would compete to go to that website. You also go to soill.org. Across the top is the nav bar. Um, there's a there's a button that says volunteer. It'll drop down. It'll sh have you register and fill out uh, what is a Class B registration form, which is requires a you know background check or whatnot. Okay, so everybody's it, going through a background check. Yeah, you go through a Class That's B standard. registration uh, background check. But you can literally uh, find events like, that you want to do. So you can literally, you can simply, I want to volunteer, I want to run the stopwatch at um, the track meet in May. Is and there you, training for that? Uh, yes, there is. There is okay. volunteer training at, at, at it. Yes, there is. Yeah. Um, so you go on, you pick the event. It'll actually ask you to volunteer. It'll tell you, yes, we've got, we need five volunteers. You click on that, you do that. If you don't have a specific event, um, you can go on and sign up as a volunteer, and you can tell them your specific skills. I mean, you can do a lot of things. You had mentioned um, your preschool, kindergarten, yeah. and one-year-olds. Our athletes start at eight years old, but we also in Illinois have a young athlete program that's two to seven-year-olds. And we've got 17,000 young athletes. And to help out... At those, it's a lot of gross motor skills events. Um, but of the 17,000 athletes, 6,000 have an intellectual disability. The other 5,000, uh, or 12,000, excuse me, don't. So it's not only about gross motor skills, whether you've got an intellectual disability or not, it's a peer program, bringing the youngsters together. So bringing the intellectually disabled together with the non-intellectually disabled together with the over 50 group is just, talk about a unification recipe it's beautiful so now real quick so, I so that's another that. opportunity okay so it's not just for children no the special lips not just for children so okay breakdown so we got uh what is that uh eight to uh, what what's the groups tell our audience well uh it's eight in, to be specific where we see the breakdown is at 22 because athletes uh the state funds the intellectually disabled to stay in high school through 22. After so that's where the crux of our athletes are. A large percentage are 8 to 22, and after 22, the numbers drop off. But we have athletes who are 80. We have athletes who are 85. Um, they just a lot don't get the funding after the 22 to stay in a program like a high school or whatever that might be to keep them in the system. Um, so, uh, but then they after 22, our numbers drop off. But um, we want to keep. We want, our goal is actually a goal is to get those over twenty two numbers, which is twenty two to eighty, ninety, whatever. So what's the, what's the mission there? What's the mission? What's there? the mission of Special Olympics, Illinois? What's the mission? And what's behind all of that? Because you said on some powerful things. Uh, we've got young folks. We've got folks who are mentally uh, disabled. Folks who are not. Folks who have most uh, uh, gross motor skills. So what's the overall mission? Beyond the sports, it's it's uh, it's inclusion and unification of all uh, people. Our, sl our tagline is, the revolution is inclusion. It's a passive revolution, of course. The revolution is inclusion. Inclusion, unified. We have unified sports. Five of our sports are, we are let's say, volleyball, uh, bocce, golf. I'm missing the other two, <coughs> excuse me. But those are sports, traditionally, that are all, so bocce, or we have that, it's called traditional, where it's all just athletes. Mm -hmm. We also have unified bocce, where it's an athlete, and they're not intellectually disabled peer. It's a brother or sister, or in the schools, um, or it's a, it's somebody over fifty. So if somebody over fifty says, "I want to give my golf talent and show that to an athlete," go to Special Olympics and sign up as a unified golf partner, and they'll pair you up, and you teach them golf, and you can you can play golf together, win at state. You can go to Orlando in two years. And play U.S. Go to play golf at USA Games. You might even end up in Berlin at the games in twenty twenty. So that's beautiful in twenty twenty three. So that's another opportunity of volunteerism. Is you play bocce or golf or volleyball or one of our unif soccer is another one. Soccer. One, one like of track our, and field. Well, I don't think track and field. We're actually starting bowling. So what are the sports 
that you can participate in in the Special Olympics? What, what are the categories? Oh, God, there's 18 of them. So if you go to our website, you'll see them all. So it's kind of, I could go through that. but that <laughs> well, well, give us a few for our, our viewing audience here. I would say the Unified Sports. Okay. That... Um, the uh, AARP members that are that are fully able would be volleyball, um, bocce, golf. Uh, we're, we're starting a bowling. Um, God, there's two more, and I can't remember what they are. Um, I should remember what they are. I'm sorry, OS. But if, that's you, okay, that's if okay. you go to our website, you'll so, find them. So and you can sign up as a as a unified partner. Okay, so outside of that, um, I've got young folks out there that are interested. You know, what activities are they able to participate in in the Special Olympics? The AAR, AARP members? No, the, the folks outside of AARP members. If I'm in the ages of 8 to 12, 8 to 15, 8 to 20, what areas of competition would I be able to participate in? If you are intellectually disabled, you can, yes. you can compete in any one of our 18 competitions. So what you would do is when you go to that website that I said, S-O-I-L-L dot org, and they eventually will marry you up to an agency, you go to that agency and they're like, these are the six or seven, um, agencies are much like a high school. Um, so you go to that agency that's in your neighborhood, which could be a park district or a school, and you get partnered up with there, and they say these are the these are the six or seven sports that we can that we can afford, ah, and they okay. train you. They tr we train those coaches much like in a high school. There's 850 agencies, much like there's 850 high schools. Yeah. And so a high school says, okay, I got my baseball team, I got my coaches. Now I want to compete. That's when the IHSA comes in. You know and, what I'm saying? And for for our viewing audience, ISSA. Illinois High School Sports Association. Okay. They're okay. the one who govern it, the rules, the regulations, run the events. We're like that. So an athlete signs up through a park district or the Chicago Park District in Chicago. And they train them and they say, Okay, my athlete is ready to compete in basketball. We that's where we come in and we say, Okay, they're gonna compete at a Special Olympics Illinois sanctioned basketball event. Wow. So Every community, every person in the community has an opportunity oh, to participate. There's 850 around the state, so they're everywhere. You can you can find something to compete in. If if you're not if you're not intellectually disabled, like I said, Unified Partners started eight years old. So if you're say, hey, I'm not intellectually disabled, but I want to be a part of it, sign up and be a Unified Partner. See, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did not. I was just under the uh, belief that it was only for folks that had a, a disability. No. Because so we want to bring has it. Has that we, always been the case? No, but it's interesting. This is not, not what they're saying. I always say this, where it's almost like, hey, we in 1968 the athletes came out of the institutions and the homes, and they were brought into the world. But there's there's a lot of stigmas. We saw it in school. I yes. mean, and, and everything. Let's race, be honest. race, color, creed, sexual yes. orientation, no matter what, yes. is, that's out there. And it's almost like we got to the point about five years ago, and we're like. We have to force a unified. We, we brought them out in the public, but let's actually have them be unified. Let's take the sport. Like you said, sports is like an international language. It, it breaks is. down all barriers. And it brings everyone together. So let's create uh, unified sports and unify these two groups together. So would I be correct in saying that the Special Olympics Illinois was the, the, the birthplace of unified sports? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No question. And, 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 and we... we we promote it. We not only say inclusion of the disabled and able. We we preach the mission of everything: sex, race, sexual orientation, religion. We, it's this is the way we have to be in this world. So we're so so real quick now. I want you to do some time traveling for me. It's 2019. Ten years from now, where do you see the special? Olympics, Illinois. Where do you see it? What's it doing? And who is it affecting? I see Special Olympics Illinois being available to everyone. We have 23,000 athletes. There's probably another 250,000 um, uh, able the athletes that could be athletes in Illinois. So there's probably 290,000 intellectually disabled children and adults in Illinois. And 23,000 of them are athletes. So there's a lot more out there. Um, Growing them, giving them the opportunity beyond the field of play to have more of them go to school, have more of them work. This is a great opportunity because a lot of times in schools, you know, we as parents, we're reluctant to encourage our children to participate because of 
the fear that we have. Uh, and this is an opportunity where the fear is removed, the support is there, the training is there, you guys are there. So how do we get this word out? And if, you, if you're just tuning in, we have our special guest in our studio. We have Chris Winston, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of the Special Olympics, you know, Illinois. And what does the Chief Marketing Officer do, Chris? Good question. <laughs> That's what my staff asks. <laughs> um, the Chief Marketing Officer, I spend a lot of my time, um, we have so many fundraising events throughout the year. We, so we're doing two things. We're promoting from event to event to event. Like we just had a big event, the Coaster Challenge at Great America. And you ride roller coasters and raise money. Um, I don't know if you heard of the Duck Derby. It's where we dropped the yes. 63,000 rubber ducks in the Chicago River. Yeah. That raises $250,000. So I spent a lot of time looking at these larger state events and promoting those, and as well as our larger um, state competitions, um, but also, you know, stewarding the brand and make sure, and make sure the brand is being used correctly and, and you know, really kind of growing um, primarily, number one, to be a good steward of the money, um, that we spend on marketing communications, I got to make sure there's a return on investment. Well, I mean, um, and secondarily, are we getting our, our name and word out there in the last few years? Okay. We have. I'm just you know amazed that here's an opportunity to for for young men, young women, girls, boys to have an opportunity to participate in sports. I mean, growing up for me, you know, everybody in my neighborhood, you know, we played sports, whether it was basketball, track and field, swimming, we did something. And it built character, it built teamwork, uh, it allowed us to be natural leaders. And here's an opportunity for everyone yeah. to be included in that. And this whole unification process, uh, I didn't know about it. So I know a lot of folks in our uh, viewing audience didn't know about it. So this is good stuff. Yeah, and I think you you, t you said the word fear, and I think legit it's legitimate you brought that up because a lot of people are like, and I'm not not for bad reason. They just don't know. They think our athletes are China dolls. You know, like ooh, I, I, I you don't have to. You can volunteer for something that's not right on the track. Um, you know, right there, you can you can volunteer for something. You can be part of coaches registration table. When they all come in and register their teams, you can be a part of that. If you're a real numbers person, you're like, I'm great at numbers. We could use you there. We could use you volunteering for finance. If What people don't know either uh, is through our Healthy Athlete Program, which is a whole other show, um, an, an athlete has to have a medical application filled out to become an athlete. So they get physicals, and we have... Um, we have medical... We have MedFest, and we have a whole Healthy Athlete. That's edition. the whole Keep It Healthy... Uh mission that you got right to have. right and be, now because of that um, it's eye, eye exams teeth exams uh, clothes physicals um, and various other things eating right Special Olympics oh by the way Special Olympics is now the largest health organization for the intellectually disabled in the world so if you're say that again say that again. Special Olympics International is the largest health organization in the world for the intellectually disabled where did that come from, right? right? So that's another volunteer opportunity. Hey, I'm, I'm retired or I'm in the medical field and I can use my skill uh, helping in the healthy initiatives and that's another direction. Well, this is a lot of you know, food for thought because I know our volunteers are always looking for uh, other opportunities. And once again, if you've just tuned in, we are here with Chris Winston, Special Olympics, Illinois, the Chief Marketing Officer. And we are actually AARP Foundation Experience Corps 312-660-8655. We're constantly looking for volunteers. Please feel free to reach out to us. We are looking for volunteers to be tutors and mentors for kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders. You are viewing us live. We are in the community with the AARP Foundation Experience Corps. Now, Chris, we've got just a few minutes left. So we had a lot to talk about. So in the next few minutes, what do you want to say that we didn't get a chance to talk about? And what do you think our viewing audience should best know about the Special Olympics Illinois? Two things right away. One, I would touch on, I've said it, we said it a couple times, but again, people say, when are the Special Olympics? Yes. Um, there's 200, like I said, there's 200 competitions in our state. There's a competition near you coming up that you can be involved in. There's something you can do. We like, got is it next week, next month. It could be if you go online and depending on where you live, there's there's something happening. We've got over 45,000 volunteers throughout the state, and we could always use more. Um, the other thing is that I think is really important. Uh, 
is is the impact. You said, what else do we do? Yeah. You know, through storytelling. If you go to a Special Olympics, uh, an event, you will be wowed um, in, by the impact. So a lot of what we do as an organization is we try to show people, yes, we are a sports organization, but we'll look what sports did for these athletes yes. off the field of play, and that's when the impact is washes over the So public. you have a storytelling component that shares these stories. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I bet you there are thousands of stories, you know. There's thousands. There's a one right away. There's a, an athlete, Daniel Smirkowski, who lives in uh, LaGrange Park. Um, and because of Special Olympics, uh, sp public speaking was his biggest fear but also his biggest passion. Guess what? He started a media company called Special Chronicles. He does podcasts to 127,000 people worldwide. So he, here's an athlete, an intellectually disabled man mm -hmm. who didn't run away from his fear. He ran towards it, oh, which is amazing. He had an opportunity. Yes, he did. So let me understand this right. So if I have a seven, eight, or nine-year-old or in home, I can go to the nearest Chicago Park District and sign up to participate in the Special Olympics Illinois. Is that correct? If they're intellectually disabled, yeah. Eight okay. years old and older. Eight yeah. years old and older. Yep. Eight years old is all old as they can be. So everybody gets an opportunity to kick the ball, to, yes. to get a medal. To run, yeah. To release their passions. Absolutely. You know, well, Chris, once again, if you're just tuning in, we're here live with Chris Winston, Chief Marketing Officer of the Special Olympics Illinois, and it's, we've had a wonderful conversation. I am your, your host. My name is O.S. Owen. I'm with the AARP Foundation. I've got to give a, a special thank you to our, our producer, uh, the, the Black Butterfly. Mm -hmm. now, he's been uh, phenomenal in allowing us to be able to put this on for you. So please feel free to reach out to us once again at AARP Foundation Experience Corps at 312-660-8655, 312-660-8655. And I want to thank Chris for joining us today. Thank, thank you, thank you so very much. Me. And please feel free to, what's that a web address? S-O-I-L-L dot org. And you mentioned Chicago specifically? Yes. Pick Region D. Region D is Chicago proper. So it covers every inch of Chicago. S O L L I D. S O L L S O I L L dot org. Okay. And then look for Region D. Region D. That's Chicago proper. Yep. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you all for tuning in. And we look for you to join us again in our next segment of In the Community with the AARP Foundation Experience Corps. Have a super fantastic day.